All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hey there, everybody. How you doing tonight? It's Kim Klima, and I'm excited to be with all, all of you this evening. I see people are still dialing in, but we have a full meeting, and I'm going to go ahead and get started. My hope is that we will not take your full hour and a half. Um, try to keep it to an hour if possible. And so um, just a little sound check, and I'm going to launch a quick poll here to see who's joining us on the service team, and maybe you can tell us a little bit about um, how, you know, how long you've been in that role, whether it's been, you know, just this is your first year or if you have, in fact, been with us a little bit longer. So while we're waiting for the folks on the, call, on the line to get set up, we'll just launch that poll, and if you can go ahead and respond, that would be fantastic. And, um, great, thanks. Almost all of you have responded so far, so thank you so much. I'm going to go ahead and give it three more seconds. Three, two, one, and we'll go ahead and close the poll. And let's take a look at who we have on the call with us tonight. So it looks like we have the majority of you um, have been with us, well, it looks like the majority, 30%, more than three years. So thank you so much for that. And then coming in second is one year or less. And um, you've been on some other meetings already this year, which is good because we're getting kind of late in the year, but hope that you're enjoying that first year. Um, actually, we have 15% of you on the call that are saying you're brand new to the service team. This is your very first meeting, so a very warm welcome to you. And um, the other 22% more than a year, but less than three, and 7% said pretty new, um, one year or less, but this is my first meeting. So again, we have a diversity of folks on the phone with us this evening. And I welcome all of you and thank you so much for your participation and for your time this evening. Um, I'd like to go ahead and mention a few things about the technology that we're using today, especially since some of you, this is your very first meeting. We are using what is called GoToWebinar technology. And all of your lines are muted, but there's a handy dandy hand raising icon in your menu. It's a blue circle with a yellow hand inside, so if at some point you'd like me to unmute your line, I'd be happy to do that. Um, for those of you on the phone with some experience under your belt, it would be great to hear from you on some of these topics, and um, I'm sure that your peers out there would love to hear from you as well. I'm your only staff facilitator tonight, so breaking up my voice would be um, welcome. And also, um, if you have any questions, you can either raise your hand or you can type those in the question log. So you have a couple options. You can also see who's on the call with us this evening. So, um, you know, you can see we're being, you know, we're currently joined right now by 34 different callers. And some of you out there, and you can give us a shout out in the question log, are calling in um, in a group. And instead of just all by yourself, you kind of gathered in one location and you're um, calling in as a team. So that's fantastic as well. Okay, well I want to give you a quick report and update on the cookie sale. I think it's important that we do bring everybody up to date. Um, so just a quick update. We're almost at the end. Um, well, we, we are at the end of that cookie season. And so we know that it's been all about success, friendship, learning, cookies, and fun. And they were all part of the season. If you call, um, if you recall, the theme was um, we think it's all worth sharing, and we had a lot of fun with our adorable cow Daisy Bell as our cookie mascot. So that was a lot of fun. Um, just take a look at how we did nationally on the cookie sale. This is a graph of the combined sales from both bakers of packages sold nationally. Um, 194 million packages and 16.2 million um, so, oh, sold nationally, 194 million packages, 16.2 million, three years of consistency. So in terms of cases and packages, you can see if nothing else, we are consistent here at 
um, the Girl Scouts. And so then also nationally, the cookie program, much like the entire Girl Scout program, um, on a national level continues to see a decline in participation. Now, um, our membership here is up, but that's not true of the full country. Um, but both, in, both interestingly and alarmingly, alarmingly, the decline of 6.5% in our cookie program participation this year outpaced the membership decline. So the cookie program, both nationally and here at the local level, um, is down in terms of girls who participated in the program. And that's really strange. Um, I'm sorry. You know what? Are you guys not seeing my screen? Some of you are saying you're not. Um, and if you're not seeing my screen, that's a pretty big problem considering... Um, What do I got to do here? You're still seeing the poll. Thanks, everybody, for that. All right. How is it How is it now? Thanks. Okay, good. So sorry about that. I'm going to back up for just a second so you can see that. I apologize. Um, not always good at flying solo. I love to have my team here with me, but everybody is booked solid. It is a very busy time of year, although I do have some of my staff team members on the call. So thank you very much. Um, just go back to that really quick and, you know, I'd be remiss if we didn't pull up Daisy the cow, um, or Bell, actually. Daisy Bell is the cookie mascot, and isn't she adorable? <laughs> I think she really is adorable. Um, okay, so you can see here the consistency in packages and cases sold. And then you can see here that participation is trending down. So GSUSA reports um, membership is down 3.1% nationally. And the cookie participation is down 6.5%. That is not very good at all. Um, but if we just go ahead and take a look at GSNEO, um, you can see that we ended the program year with um, 2,261,328 packages sold, which is down 4.7% over last year. And as I mentioned before, um, this, this decline is really likened to participation. We actually had more girls this year selling um, but, or I'm sorry, more girls in the membership, but less girls selling cookies. And um, that's just, you know, you'd have maybe a troop of five girls and two participating in the cookie sale. So it's really a bummer, and I, I'm sure we need to get to the bottom of that one. Um, you can see here that we were down 950 girls and the participation. Um, so it's just kind of... Kind of crazy. Over the last five years, we've seen an overall decline of 20% of girls selling, which is below the national average decline of 25%. So we're better than the national, um, we're better than what we're doing nationally, but still, that's not a good problem to have. And then how the cookie crumbles, just to take a look at that. Um, this is always um, exciting to see how what our customers are buying versus what the national, um, you know, on the national level, what people are buying. And what you can see here locally is our tagalongs and our um, do -si dos are up pretty significantly. So apparently people in Ohio, because this is true in the other Ohio councils as well, really love peanut butter. And I could tell you I'm one of those people. So I'm a big fan of the peanut butter cookie. I don't know about you guys. Um, also, we can see overall the results of the sales show a decline. Um, even, even though we had these declines, we did have some successes. Successes. So one of them is that for the fifth year in a row, we've increased our per girl average. So we have less girls actually participating, but the girls who are participating are selling more cookies. And so for five years straight, they've done better and better and better. So way to go, girls. We can also see that the cookie rallies were a huge success, and thank you all for all your hard work locally. Um, we were able to engage 5,500 girls in the cookie sale, so or in the cookie rally. So that's really exciting. 
um, you know, in the past we were only able to serve about 2,000. So we more than doubled the number of girls that went to a rally this year. And that's because of you guys that you did this locally. Um, there were 50 cookie rallies. Every single county had one. And so that was fantastic. Also, we're pleased to say that this year we had a very small number um, of cookie issues. That's a good thing, right? Um, and again, many thanks to our awesome Cookie Booth sponsors. Uh, we offered over 5,000 booth slots with a fill rate of 88%. And that fill rate is among the highest in all of Little Brownie Baker Councils, which they serve um, Little Brownie is one of two bakers, and they have more councils than ABC. So out of 76 councils that Little Brownie serves, we were the highest in number of cookie booth um, fill rate. And our super big excitement comes from Troop 90501 from Cuyahoga Falls, who won one of GSUSA's National Blinger Booth Contest. And they're going to get a check for $250. Isn't that the cutest booth you ever saw? I love it. I love it. And be maybe because it was a psychiatric booth, that's why we had so few um, problems. No, I'm kidding. But isn't that funny? Um, and Melanie's on the phone. She said, hey, that troops for my service unit. <laughs> so good for you. Let them know they were superstars on the call tonight. Um, they're so cute. Okay, so the other thing to note, uh, note and this is remarkable, um, we had a 45% increase in the packages that we donated to the troops. So GSNEO sent 58,313 packages of cookies to our soldiers, and I'm so proud of us for that. Um, also, you can see that our digital cookie um, this is our second year with the digital order card, and we did really well with that as well. We sold 27,132 packages on the DOC with an average of 7.8 packages per order. So that's pretty good. There were 1,483 girls who activated their sites and sent emails on the digital order card. Cool beans, right? Very good. Um, and last slide on cookies with regard to rewards. Um, so no cookie stories complete without talking about rewards. And we continue to be a leader among councils in its generosity to both girls and troops. Our incentive spend is 19 cents per package. And this, do, um, this does not, I believe, include the 7 cents for pathway passes. So I'm sorry, it does include. So even if you look at it as 12 cents, that's 2 cents over the national average. So we offered um, $191,000 in pathway passes. And did you know that in many councils, girls have to choose between pathway passes, and some of them don't call them that, they call them cookie dough, and the rewards. They don't get both. But at our council, they get both. We're very generous with that. And I think that it pays off because our girls are definitely appreciating those awards. They're selling more cookies. And their parents, you know, it, it alleviates a strain on the parents, too, for the um, programming. But, you know, just something to take pride in if you're talking to your Girl Scout sisters around the country, that um, we're very generous with our cookie rewards. And, you know, not to mention the fact that the rest of the money from the cookie sale, um, after we pay the baker, really goes right back into programming. And so that's why we have all these cool things at our camps now and, um, all that wonderful programming that we offer in Faces and Places and the financial assistance that we have available. So um, everything goes right back to the girls. Speaking of girls, I um, wanted to give you a quick update on how we're doing with the membership. So um, I just want to again say a huge congratulations to our, um, our membership because we have currently 26,951 members and we still have a little bit of paper um, memberships to enter and so when you do the math on everything it turns out that we have um, even without that we have more girls right now in Girl Scouting than we did on this very day last year by just about a thousand and 
I have to tell you, if you're brand new to um, Girl Scouting, that, that this is the first time we're able to say that in like 10 years. So, I, you know, um, if you ask anybody here on staff, we'll tell you that the reason we're, pull, you know, we finally have turned this around and we're one of the only councils in the country that's done this is the partnership with you guys because it's a team. You know, we all work together as a team. And when, when they call us from around the country and say, hey, what are you guys doing? We haven't been able to turn this around. How did you turn it around? And oh, by the way, not to mention that our retention is the highest in the country. Um, we turn around and say it's the volunteers on our service teams that we are partnered with. It's all of us working together. And so huge thanks to you. Um, we're talking about you all over the country. Um, in addition to that, you can see that our adult membership is pretty close. We're a little behind, but not horribly behind. And if you flip on over to our spring, so if you start looking at um, next year's membership numbers, there's 2,797 girls ready to go for the fall. And on this day last year, there were only 2,292. So that right there is up about 500 girls. And um, if you take a look at those adults, once again, you can see that we're making up for the um, gap because we're ahead on adults as well. And it's even exciting that you see we have that boost in lifetime memberships. And I do want to take a moment to pause right there and let you know, this is a really good year to buy your lifetime membership. And why is that? Because membership is going up um, after next year. And so it stands to reason that lifetime membership will go up as well. We don't have the details on lifetime membership, but if I was you, I'd get in on this. Um, and you could see a lot of people are doing that. That number doesn't usually go up by that much each year, but we currently have 1,502 adults who are lifetime members. And don't forget, if you have girls that are graduating from high school this year, they get a once in a lifetime deep discount on lifetime membership and it expires if their paperwork is not turned in by September 1st, they miss the boat. And that's not a deadline we can play around with. So you got to get that message out. We're notifying people. We've sent out several communications already direct to the homes of the girls, um, but every little bit helps because I hate when they miss that deadline. It breaks my heart. So please help us with that one. And by the way, there's just a couple reminders um, you know, it is time to renew. June 30th is coming quickly. And remember that there's a lot of good reasons to renew your membership. And please help us remind all the volunteers out there to renew their troops um, by June 30th. And that includes renewing their girls and turning in their finance reports. So they're all set for fall. Then once they participate in the fall product sale, they'll also make that three cents per box extra on the cookie sale. And um, this is also a really good time to be looking at those troop detail reports and your service unit rosters because um, some of our volunteers out there have expired background checks. Now this information is sent on a third report, which is actually a background check report. Sherry's been sending that out quarterly, so if you need a fresh copy, um, you can ask your CME, call customer care or ask for Sherry Johnson, who oversees all of the background check coordination, and she can send you an updated report. The thing is, people are calling us, and they're calling customer care, and they're saying, where can I find the place on the website where I can do my background check? Well, it doesn't work that way. So this is how it works. You go in to renew your role um, on the member community, and if your background check is expired, you will be sent an email from Assurance, that's our background check vendor, and you have to click the link in that email and then do your background check. Every single person has a unique link in their web, in their email. So, um, you know, you can't just use somebody else's. So, um, if you need us to reissue that email, all you have to do is give us a call, or um, and really it's Sherry Johnson who can do that for you. Um, and you can call her or email her at sjohnson at gsneo.org. Okay, and um, please keep in mind that um, you need to be completing, if you are a service unit director, the um, annual review for your CME. Um, we may 
be able to build that out and include other service team members in the annual review process next year. This year we're starting with just the directors. So service unit directors, you have been sent information about a review. We need you to do that and set up your meetings with your CME so we can get you reappointed. And also then your whole team needs to get together to do some goal setting for next year. I know that we're really harping on this, but what we're trying to do is not set our goals without your input. You guys are the ones that live in your community. You know what's going on there. And gone are the days when we just set a goal and tell you what it is. We really want input from you as we are in this goal setting process. So this is a very lengthy process. The first, it starts with you. Um, when you guys get those goals finished, that's going to roll back up to your CME and then your regional area. Everything's going to roll all the way back up to me. And then I will get with Jane and Barbara on that. And eventually we'll take that to our board of directors. So it's really important that everybody's doing their part. Um, we don't want to do this work without you anymore. We know that it's important for you to have buy-in and, and con you know, contribute to that goal setting. So if you have any concerns or questions, you can let me know. Um, I will let you know that there are three CME vacancies right now. And um, I two are in the North Canton area. Um, one was Megan. Um, who served like Parma and in, uh, Independence area. And then we had um, Nolly, who was kind of that South Akron. And, uh, and then, you know, like Barberton, Rittman, that area. And then we had um, Carolyn, who was from our Youngstown and, and greater Youngstown area. So um, Two of those three positions, we've identified candidates. I got to tell you, I'm really picky about who we hire as CMEs. Um, I will guarantee you that when we do make that selection, these will be people that you will like and will be very supportive and helpful for you. Um, nothing is more important to me than that right now. Um, I, I'm very picky about who we put on this team. And, but we have two candidates that we have just fallen in love with. We know that you'll like them, and we need one more. We're hoping that by mid-June we can get these folks in place and then um, start getting them trained up to the positions. So I promise you we're working very hard on that. Um, also want to remind you that, um, let me see, I have some notes here actually from CMEs. Uh, Maureen, I'm kind of going over your note. I know you're on the line with us here, and I thought your reminders were really good. I know the one that you um, mentioned was about the background check, so I, I went over that. Um, and then I know the other thing that you said was as you've been meeting with your teams, um, I guess there's been some questions about the different roles, right, the volunteer um, positions. I think is what you were saying. So, you know what, Maureen, if it's okay with you, I'm going to unmute your line. I hope I'm not putting you on the spot too much. Um, are you there, Maureen? Could you maybe um, give us a little insight as to the volunteer opportunities available for a troop and the questions that you're getting on that? Are you there? I should be able to hear you. It looks like you're unmuted from both ends. But I don't hear you. I'm sorry. I don't know why. Okay. Um, <laughs> she's typing hello. I see your type hello. So sorry. I don't know what's going on myself. I have you. Um, it says that we should be able to hear you. So I don't know if it's a microphone. Maybe you want to change to... Um, it's a different speaker or your phone. I'll leave you unmuted in case I hear you pipe in. But just as a reminder and just to be on the safe side, what I'm going to do is kind of just review. On the service team, we have the director who oversees the full team. And the primary role of that director is to keep all the balls in the air, right? Just making sure that all the pieces, parts are working and that there's order and leadership in the unit. Um, we have, you know, um, they do a lot more than that, and I don't mean to minimize it, but I'm giving a very high-level review. Our, our recruiters are there to help bring in new membership. Our organizers are there to help make sure the new troops get up and off the ground and 
that our volunteers have um, a buddy, you know, a coach, a support person. And then, of course, our registrars are there to make sure everyone's all squared away on the paperwork. So um, these are the four core positions. Of course, our service team members, our product sale people are very important too. In the troop, we have three positions that are equivalent to troop leader. Those are troop leader, um, troop program guide, which is the adult in leadership role that says, I love working with the girls, but I hate doing the paperwork. And then we have the troop admin, which is the leader in the troop that says, I'm not really crafty, but I'll do the paperwork. So they complete each other. And you can, you have to have two of these primary roles and you can mix and match any way you want. You can have two leaders, whatever you want to do. Um, but you have to have two of these roles and these are what we call primary roles. And then we have secondary roles, which are very important too. And those are things like treasurer, field trip chaperone, field trip driver, uh, helping hands, um, and our product sales chairs for the troop. Again, these are very important positions as well. If you're a primary person, you don't also have to select something like helping hands because it's a secondary role and you just pick the more senior role. Um, that is unless you are also the product chair. So if you're the product chair, it's really important that you do identify yourself as such because we do a lot of communication with that role specifically. Um, otherwise, just those primary roles are important. So hopefully that helps. Certainly your CMEs can give you the lowdown on this. Don't be afraid to ask. I, I know some of you by now are like, I'm, not, I'm supposed to know this, so I don't want to ask. But don't feel that way. It's perfectly okay to ask these questions. Okay, how are we doing? I know we got a lot of information coming in here. <laughs> um, oh, and Maureen said, you got it. That's exactly what she was trying to say. So I'm so glad we figured that out. Gotta love um, technology, right, Maureen? <laughs> Just the way it goes sometimes. That's okay. Not a problem. Um, all right, I do want to let you know some real important information here, and this is regarding recognition. So there will be some changes to the President's Award criteria for 2016-17. We are currently right now in the 15-16 year. And so if you have been working since October on earning the President's Award, we encourage you to continue to work on that just in case you don't remember what the criteria are for the 2016 year it is in your handouts so if you look on the menu on the webinar here on your screen you go down to handouts you'll see I've attached a couple of things there for you you can click on those open them up they're PDFs and they're there for you um, there's one for 2016 and then there's the 2017 draft so that's the one we're in now and the one for next year the reason why it's really important for us to start giving you the next year information right now is because some of the things you have to do to earn the President's Award next year, you have to actually do them now. And those are things that are renewing, you know, making sure that your service unit renews um, at 75% renewal rate in your unit, which is also the same incentive rate for service units. You want to make sure that you attend the webinars and the two required meetings each year. One is in, Oct um, in August is the kickoff, and then we have a mid-year meeting. This year that was in January. Maybe it'll be in January again, but there's two in-person required meetings per year, and you need to get your team there. If you're on the team, these are important meetings. So the next one is coming up on August 10th. It's on Wednesday. That's a Wednesday. It uh, kicks off the year. It's right before ALE gets started. It's at Camp Ledgewood. And so, um, you know, get registered for that now because other if you miss these things, see, then you won't qualify next year as a President's Award unit. And we want more and more people to qualify for that. We know how hard you work. You also need to make sure that your service unit finance report gets turned in by June 30th. Guess how many we have so far? Two. That's not enough, okay? I know you're probably waiting on your May Bank statements, and so I'm sure these are going to rush in through the door in a couple of weeks here. I have all the confidence in the world. 
Keep in mind that we are able to track this a lot easier now, so we're really going to be cracking down on getting these things in. Um, it's really important and it's a requirement. So um, also you're going to need to make sure you have a signed work plan completed for 2017 by June 30th. And you want to make sure you have that full team, the four core plus your product sales people. So as you can see, I can't wait until the kickoff to tell you about these things or you'll have already missed the boat. So um, keep that in mind. And also this draft um, stuff, like I said, is in your handouts. So um, speaking of recognitions, the other thing I want to run a couple of things by you real quick. Um, we do have local service unit awards. So I think it was outstanding volunteer, outstanding new volunteer, new leader of the year. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm probably butchering this. I apologize. And also... Um, you guys feel free to help me out our seasoned our vets here on the on the phone and the volunteer of excellence oh thanks Kelly she, okay outstanding volunteer outstanding leader outstanding new leader and volunteer of excellence thank you Kelly okay so my questions here's first of all I want to tell you all of the awards that start with the word outstanding are GSUSA awards from they've been around for a long time they no longer make those pins they stopped those awards a couple years ago we continue to honor those awards because we still had pins okay but we are beginning to run low on our inventory what GSUSA did when they got rid of these is they created the volunteer of excellence and so we also offer that. So right now, because we have all the pins, we offer four local service unit awards. So now the next question is, now what do we do? Because we're running out of pins. So do we commission somebody out there to make pins and continue these four awards? We definitely will keep the volunteer of excellence because that is the current national local one but of the three outstanding leader outstanding volunteer and outstanding new leader do we need all three of those how important are they to you um, do could we get rid of one of them or all of them or are you one of the people that are like no way keep them all and I will say that it's going to cost some money to um, it's going to cost to get these pins made you know, and our, our resources, as you know, are very limited. So it's important that we understand how important this is to you. And I'm going to actually launch a poll to get some input on this. So the question is, do you, I want all the same four awards? I wouldn't mind slimming down the awards. I don't know anything about service unit awards which is possible and be honest, or it really doesn't matter. So we just need to get your opinion. And um, certainly if you feel strongly in it in some way, you can always email. Um, you, you can email me or um, you can put something in the question log. Oh, and Shannon said outstanding new leaders already gone. So if we're going to do that one, we'd have to buy it right away. So. How are you guys feeling? We got 84% who have responded so far. And, you know, keeping in mind, too, that even if we didn't do these pins, and this might be something you can chime in on, too, in the question log, if we didn't commission these pins, you know, would it be okay with you if we keep the awards, but maybe we turn, you know, do patches or a certificate? So, like... The poll is good. Answer the poll. We got 92% participation right now. But then also feel free to put your comments in the question log so I can capture that. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and close the poll. With this, 8% of you are not participating. So 8% that didn't participate, where are you? You probably had to go answer the door or feed a child. Um, 
Okay, I'm going to share those results. And what I'm seeing here is 54%, that's more than half of you, um, said that um, you wouldn't mind slimming these awards down a little bit. Um, so, and then the, in second place is 20% of you said, I want all the same four awards available. So, um, a couple of you are in the question log. Um, giving me information which is very important to this decision-making process. And then, of course, 11% said you really didn't know. And so once we get this figured out, we'll make sure that we pass out all this information at the kickoff meeting and writing for you so that you have a packet and you know what's up. Um, mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Um, very good. Let me not forget to hide this poll so that you can go back to seeing the screen. And where did my polls go? Give me a second. Polls. Polls. Hello. Sorry, I'm talking to myself, but not really because you're all right there. Okay, hide. Thank you. All right, very good. Thank you so much for that. Very much appreciate it. Now, this is part two, along the same lines. The numeral guards, you know that we have 5, 10, 15, 20, 25 year, et cetera, pins to honor every five year milestone an adult has in Girl Scouting. And so um, my next question is this. Um, our funds are limited. As you see, our cookie sale um, is down. We have to find ways to save some money and cut back on some of the things that we were able to do before. And so all of this is really trying to figure out where are we going to make some cuts because with the cookie sale being a little bit down, um, you know, and, and just costs of things going up all over, you know, just the cost of doing business and all, we have to make some adjustments. The numeral guards are $3 a piece and currently we hand them out for free. Um, one of the questions that we are struggling with right now is do we just move these numeral guards to the retail business? Do we move them to the shop and let them be for sale? Um, kind of the way girl, girls are because you have to buy the girl pens um, for their years, right? So how do you feel about that? And I'm going to launch another poll on that um, to get your input. So regarding the year guards. Um, how do you feel? If you can go ahead and vote on that one, I'd appreciate it. Do -do. We need some music. You want me to sing? <laughs> I can almost hear you all saying, oh gosh, no. Well, if you change your mind, just let me know. I'd be happy to spit out a tune here. <laughs> All right, 84% voted, and we'll give it three more seconds. Three, two, one, close the poll, launch the poll, and we have 65% of you said you understand you're okay with that. 18% said bums me out, but I get it. And then 15% said, really doesn't matter. It was only 3% that said, no way, that would be offensive to me. And although we really don't want to offend anybody, um, I would say that um, we do have to make some decisions somewhere. So thank you for your understanding on that. And again, I continue to encourage you to put all of your thoughts and opinions and feelings into the question log. That actually stays as part of the record of the webinar. So that's going to be very valuable to us as we're looking at these things. So thank you so much. Okay. Um, are you guys seeing my screen? Or are you still seeing the poll? Oh, you are. Thanks, Maureen. Okay. Great. All right. So that's about recognition. Moving on, um, I do want to just kind of kick back to the kickoff meeting again and remind everybody <clears throat> that that is... Um, the kickoff for ALE, it, it's actually the kickoff for the year. It's right before ALE. It's on Wednesday, August 10th from 6.30 to 9. This is a required meeting for service team members. 
Um, sign up for each position is included in the ALE registration. So don't forget to sign up for the service unit team kickoff party afterwards too, by the way. It's just five bucks and it's, that is going to help us pay for some hot dogs and refreshments and a lifeguard. Which, by the way, if you have a lifeguard in mind who might be willing to work or volunteer for us that evening, um, you know, either we obviously at five dollars a person we'll have a little budget to pay the lifeguard, um, or if we can find someone that you know to volunteer for free, then we'll have a little bit more money for snacks and refreshments. We would love to hear from you on that one because we're kind of stumped right now. Uh, everyone we know is booked solid and already doing so much for us that we can't even complain at all. So help is needed there. Um, you know, are you guys planning to come? Because when I looked at the um, numbers today, there were like 35 people signed up for the meeting in total. And so that's a little alarming because there's like 400 of you. <laughs> and so, um, you know, if you think about 129 units and, you know, the hope is to have four people per unit, right? Um, some units have a couple extra people because instead of one organizer, they have two or three, et cetera. Um, currently right now we have almost 400 people who serve in these four core positions. And so to have 30 some people signed up for the required meeting is a little disheartening. Um, so I'm just kind of wondering um, from you guys, you know, what your intentions are. So could you just kind of click off one of these buttons? I'm, I'm sorry, I know I've thrown a lot of polls at you tonight, but we're really trying to get input from you guys. Um, so if you can just kind of let us know where you stand on that. Um, the, four, the four core SUD, organizer, recruiter, registrar, are required to attend. If you want to bring your product sales folks along, um, you know, you're, you're welcome to do that. I mean, we're not going to hinder you from doing that. Um, it's just that when we go into breakout, you just have to decide where you want to send those people um, because we're going to end up in a breakout session. So kind of the way it's going to work is we have some recognitions. We're going to be recognizing all the units that met the 75%. We're going to be recognizing all the units that have all four core filled. And we're going to also be recognizing brand new service team members, and that's going to be a whole lot of fun. And then we have some announcements. We're going to have the revised policies. We're going to have a packet for you with your updates, like the new recognitions and the working calendar. And then we're going to break out into our four um, positions. And in those four positions, we will have, um, you know, directors are really going to be working on team dynamics and overseeing your teams and effective ways to build up your leader meetings and stuff like that. Our organizers are going to be really focused on successfully onboarding new volunteers because that's a huge piece of the work that we're improvement area that we're working on right now. Recruiters are going to be getting all the new collateral. So if, if you're there in August, you're going to be going home with a lot of really cool stuff. And then um, the registrars, I said to Lizbeth, all I got to say is it's Lizbeth. Of course you're going to want to be at the registrar training. So, um, you know, she's kind of, it's going to be kind of an open dialogue, working through some of the questions and problems and just kind of troubleshooting. So um, we hope that you're going to be there. Now, I do understand some of you guys are going to be on vacation. I get all of that. Maybe you can send a representative in your place. Maybe your four core weren't there, but three of your four were there. So, um, and somebody was on vacation, you know but maybe send a substitute. Um, it's just, it's going to be the place to be and we hope to see you. Let's go ahead and close this poll and I'll share those results with you real quick. We had 22% of you on the line who said, yeah, I'm all signed up, ready to go. Another 22%, yep, I'm coming, but I didn't register yet. 28% said, not sure. And then 28% also said, sorry, can't be there. So, that means of everybody on the phone tonight, 28% of you can't be there. Everybody else will be there. So please get registered, and then I can stop having a heart attack. No, I'm kidding. But just please register because um, we're really 
trying to plan everything and the sooner you register the better will be at serving what your needs so um thank you for that okay and a lot of you are sounding out you know here in the question log about where you're going to be um and what you're going to be doing and some of you are like already going to be in three places on that day for gsneo <laughs> nicole <laughs> thank you okay so um Speaking of kicking off, you know, the year and ALE and all that good stuff, ALE is coming up, and I do want to make sure to let you know that it, what's really exciting is things are filling up. And um, unlike the, the kickoff meeting with the, the slow start, ALE is not a slow start. Things are really booking, and that's exciting. The class sizes are not one or two people. Like, we're up to 10, 11 people in a class. We're excited about that. Um, and so... Thanks to ALE, um, one adult said she has more knowledge, enthusiasm, and clarity in um, contacts to help her deliver quality programming. So, I mean, it's a really great place to be. And it's August 11th through the 13th, and it's at Camp Ledgewood. So registration is open. It will be open till the um, the beginning of August. So you got to get, get in now. You still have some time. But like I said, things are filling up. Now, child care and housing, um, I think child care is really full. So, um, wow, like that's, that was a hot, uh, hot button. And then also housing was filling up. So we added a couple more places to go where you can spend the night to um, make it a little bit more accessible. But it's really, this is a cool place to be. So don't miss out on that. Um, okay, out and about, taking trips and trip training. I, a couple of things here I want to um, let you guys know. First of all, um, we are working on an online pilot. So it's going to be coming in the 2016-17 year. We want to break this training up into more progressive segments like day trips and simple overnights is one thing. And then maybe extended trips or extended and international being a separate training. Um, currently right now we have two amazing volunteers who train trip planning. And that's two adults who train this in the whole council. So um, we are definitely going to be engaging them in this process. And we're going to be reaching out to them and asking them to help us with all of this um, piloting. And hopefully they'll want to do that. Um, <clears throat> Because this is a pilot, we are still going to offer trip training just like we always have, and our trainers will continue to train it. But in addition to that, we are going to offer three online trip planning trainings for the day trips and simple overnights to see how it goes. Okay, And so people can either take the traditional class or they can come to this pilot class and it will qualify for their training. But um, Emily Fletcher Fine and I are going to be facilitating this training, hopefully with our trainers too, if they're available. Um, and we're going to massage this out to see how we can end up with um, a training option that's online for people. Um, so when we all come together again, not the next webinar, which is pos position specific, but the one after that, which is on July 28th, when all the members are on the same webinar again, we will go over um, the pilot curriculum and get your input so you understand what we're talking about. Um, what I do want to say, first of all, if you, if you want to give some input to this or feedback to it, feel free to reach out. Um, you can contact um, training at gsneo.org or reach out to Barbara, Lisa, or me. But also, um, what's really important right now is to please remind everybody in your service unit that um, if they're planning to take a trip, they, they need training and they need to do a trip app. Because what's happening is we're finding out like way too late in the game that people are trying to go places that they're not allowed to go. And then we have to be like the big bad guys and we really don't like that part of our jobs. Um, and I will give you an example. We found out through the grapevine that we had a troop that was planning to take, um, you know, their group of girls, wilderness camping, boating, 
and archery and all these things, they have no training, not to mention basic leadership training or outdoor essentials. They didn't file a trip app, none of it. And so, you know, we had to pull a plug on that. And that really stinks. That's not a fun day because the volunteers are mad and the girls are heartbroken and that stinks, you know. So I know that probably the people that are coming to your meetings, you're giving them this information and where, where everything is working, it's working. It's the ones that aren't coming around or not paying attention or not doing any of their due diligence that this is happening with. And um, somehow we got to find a way to tighten the belt. And uh, I'm hoping that by putting some of this stuff online, it'll be easier for people and maybe they'd be more likely to actually take the training. The other thing is we're planning to put like a full page ad in the faces and places that just says, reminder, if you're traveling, you have to take the strip training and get the trip training, you know, advertisement dates in there and stuff like that. So if you have any other ideas to help us out on this, we'd appreciate it. But just wanted to let you know what was going on there. Another thing that we really want to capture with you guys right now is parades. Parades are huge. We know we do a lot of parades in the summertime. We're in a lot of parades, really, we are. But who's parading? So we're going to put a little um, fillable form on the website and ask that you report your parades. Just let us know which parade you're going to be in, how, you know, about how many girls are going to participate. It's not a real, um, you know, exact science. We just kind of want to get the gist of it. We'd love to know who's the contact person in case, you know, we want to get some information or talk with you. And then also wanted to let you know that real soon we're going to have some parade toolkits for you. So if you're doing parades, we will have some things that you can um, pass out, hand out, carry. Um, we already have stickers and pencils. We have I Can't Wait to business cards we can give you by the box. We have um, uh, flags that you can borrow, although I will tell you there's only like two sets per service center. So borrow them uh, and return them quickly and or um, borrow from your neighboring service units perhaps. We also have some banners. So we want to just get in on the parade front and we'll be um, sending you guys a link to that JAT form as soon as we get that up and running. Okay, any questions on that? All right, moving right along. Um, Summer camp, you guys are going to be so thrilled to hear that our summer camp program is up 14%. That is so great. Um, resident camps at Ledgewood are up 36%. And at Timberlane, they're up 33%. Resident camp is kind of a big commitment. And so for families to be making a commitment to send their kids to resident camp and to be up that much percentage across the board speaks volumes. And we know that um, some of the reasons why our camps are truly up the way that they are is, you know, we're, we're kind of beyond that disgruntled sale of the camp thing. You know, that really kind of put a um, kibosh on enthusiasm around camp. So we're kind of getting beyond that. We have some amazing facilities upgrades. We have a huge marketing campaign for the camps. You know, the continuity and the staffing is important. So this, the camp directors aren't only hired for a couple months out of the year, but we keep them year-round and they build some relationships with the families. And um, we have more members. We do, I will say, need um, staff. So um, we have some part-time um, grant facilitators that we've offered to see if they'd be interested in coming in to work at camp this summer. We still need a couple unit leaders, five to ten counselors. Um, you know, that's kind of a tough job. I mean, you're, you're going to take eight and a half weeks in your, between June and August and live at camp and do this. Um, the salaries do vary. These are paid positions. And actually, we're kind of excited, too, that we have 10 international staff coming in who also serve as Girl Guides in their, in their countries, and they're from the UK and New Zealand. So that's exciting. But if you know somebody that might be interested in one of these positions, please let us know. This is not totally unusual. You know, it's really hard to get these folks um, hired in every year, year after year. It's, and um, we've been at all the fairs and, and all the pay, we're everywhere on this. So if you can put your feelers out, that would be fantastic. Okay. Um, 
Somebody said they have a parade coming up June 3rd. Can they get materials before that date? Sarah, where do you live? Sarah, let me know in the in the question log. And yes, I mean, we can work something out. Somebody's got to live nearby. We'll get this stuff out to you. Absolutely. So I will follow up with you after the, after the call via email. Okay. And great. Oh, man. Sabrina was just here today. But we'll get that taken care of. Thank you so much for that info. Thanks, Sarah. Okay. And then also, speaking of that camp campaign, don't forget, camp life is the best life. So summer is right around the corner, and we want the girls to have a summer filled with friends and fun and a lot of firsts. So the Camp Life Invite a Friend Incentive launched this month. All girls attending camp receive an email letting them know that if they invite a girl who is not yet a Girl Scout to camp and she registers for camp, both girls will receive some cool pink sunglasses. So that's fun. Girls can tell us who they invited by responding to the email that they received. If they can't find the email, that's okay. They can email us at marketing at gsneo.org and tell us their friend's name or their name, and we'll figure it out. We'll then mail them their sunglasses when both the girls are registered and confirmed. Um, please note that this applies to all individual camp options, and girls do not have to be registered for the same camp. In addition to our resident camps, don't forget to spread the word about our awesome day camps. These camps are held in the community and ran by awesome volunteers and a great option for girls who aren't, all, who aren't maybe ready for a full week of resident camp or maybe who live far away from Camp Ledgewood or Camp Timberlane or maybe they just love to have fun. I loved summer camp. Um, three of our day camps specifically need more girls to join the fun. Super Scouts, located at Farm Nature Preserve in Fremont. Shout out to our Fremont friends. River Valley Day Camp, located at Indian Hollow in Grafton. Yippee, is anyone on the phone from Grafton? And Trekking Through the Metro Parks, located at Osborne Metro Park in Huron. So that one sounds fun too. If you have a, um, if you have, know someone in those areas, please send them to gsneo.org slash camp to learn all about that. And Lisa has a parade coming up June 4th. Awesome. Thank you for that. I will follow up with you as well. And da -da -da -da, let's see here. <laughs> Brenda's on the line. She said, Super Scouts will be the best. <laughs> so sign up for summer camp. And Julie Ann just said, my Back to the Basics camp has nine spots left to. Julie where is that? Oh, she said, Louisville, Ohio. Louisville, Ohio. So do you want to let everybody know what county that's in? I can look at my handy dandy map here. Stark. Thank you. All right. So that's another one. So it's not, it's, um, you know, it's good to know where these openings are because we like to push people your way. I, I know that they know, like the camp registration people, but while we're on the phone, it's good to know that. Spread the word. The word. Um, and don't forget that Welcome to Daisy is still going strong through June 30th. We still have flyers and posters. Um, reminder to the recruiters that we need to get those out to 10 locations per month and a couple preschools per month is our goal. And we have also an invite a friend swaps package. So um, we want to make sure that we're um, doing all that fun stuff. And let me just see what she told me here. Um, if you do not have a service unit recruiter, we hope you are actively trying to recruit one. Meanwhile, service unit directors may also order marketing materials online by visiting the service unit recruiter resource page. Please allow a couple weeks for fulfillment and delivery. So if you're if you're on a tighter deadline, you're going to want to make sure that you kind of put some stars around that and say, you know, last minute request because typically we're, we're working all day to fill these orders. Um, and then this week, we the Invite a Friend campaign launched. So first, we sent girls a swaps package that not only teaches our new Daisy families about the history and tradition of swaps, but we also sent instructions and the pieces that they need to assemble two swaps, one for our new Daisy to keep and one for her friend. She can write her name and troop number on it and use it to invite her friend to join her troop. 
Second, there is an invite a friend contest. In the Welcome to Daisy e-news, we announced that the first 75 girls who invite a friend who goes online and registers to join, her troop will receive a patch for herself and for her friend. To participate, families need to email us at marketing at gsneo.org with their girl's name and the name of the girl they invited. Uh, and then we will confirm both girls are registered and mail their patches to them. So all of that was in their email communication, and I would imagine that was in the Recruiter Digest as well. Or the, I'm sorry, the Recruiter Monthly. Great. You guys are letting me know where you've taken all those flyers already. So awesome. See, this is why we're the best in the country. Um, also, this is a great time of year to invite girls to join Girl Scouts. Even though many troops take time off during the summer, inviting girls to attend bridging events, award ceremonies, and end-of-the-year celebrations is a great way to show them how exciting Girl Scouts can be. Be sure to sign them up now to secure their spot for next year before recruitment launches in July. Um, better yet, have her register for this year and complete early registration for next year so she can receive her first patch and ticket to the zoo. End of year events are also a great way to recruit new volunteers. Letting potential volunteers see the impact Girl Scouting has on girls firsthand will help them understand how important and meaningful volunteering can be. So recruiters, by the way, just a reminder, everybody has a position specific webinar on June 23rd. Recruiters, you're going to have, and during your call, you're going to have the big reveal. So we're going to be launching the fall recruitment marketing campaign. Uh, we'll go over recruiter orientation. And then, um, by the way, in-person recruiter orientation is also on the events calendar. So if you haven't signed up for that yet, you'll want to go ahead and do that. Check out the event calendar and get all the information that you'll need. We're winding up our meeting here um, pretty quickly. So... Bear with me for just a couple more moments. Um, we already announced this a couple times, but just want to make sure everybody is getting the message. Um, as the first and largest girl-led organization in the world, we continue to evolve our unique leadership program and implement new technologies and ways of work to enhance the Girl Scout experience for girls, volunteers, and parents. To ensure that we have the resources to support this work, the National Board of Girl Scouts of the USA has made a decision to increase the annual membership fee to $25 starting October 1st, 2017. So that's in over a year from now. Both girl and adult members will be $25. Every dollar of membership dues is sent to Girl Scouts of the USA to cover the cost of fundamental services supporting the Girl Scout movement, including accident insurance for members participating in approved Girl Scout activities, research, resources, training, and services to councils. Visit the website for a link to the GSUSA FAQs. So, um, yeah, so... Nikki said, so those that early bird next year will still be at $15. Um, no, those who early bird this year are $15. So it's $15. You won't start paying $25 until April 1st, 2017. So, um, you know, we have one full year, you know, until next April before we start paying $25. And that will be for the 17-18 year. So this year is $15. Next year is $25. And Brenda, I know she's got that broken down to packages of cookies sold. I forget what she said, but if you, uh, she'll probably convert that for you if you need her to. <laughs> um, corrects me up. Okay. So just a reminder, too, the Girl Scout membership is still one of the most valuable investments that anyone can make in a girl's life. Um, this increase brings the cost of joining Girl Scouts into line with the value of its programming and the unique leadership opportunities for girls not available through any other organization. And I would stand 
buy that to the day that I die. Um, at $25 per year, Girl Scouting is the best value there is. Even so, we know that a dues increase is never welcome news. It has budgetary implications for girls, troops, service units, and the council. It might help to know how this compares with the fees of other youth serving organizations in our footprint. You know, for example, the Boy Scouts is $25. Erie County Youth Bowling League is $300 plus equipment. Fairlawn School of Music is $27. Doesn't include the cost of your instrument. And summers are optional. The Beck Center for the Arts in Lakewood Youth Ballet class is $200 per season and the cost of shoes and apparel is not included. The YMCA of Youngstown household membership is $81.52 per month plus $140 join fee. And the Canton Parks and Rec Center for Girls Basketball League is $45 per season. And then let's, the game design at the North Canton Sylvan Learning Center is $525 for 12 sessions. OMG. So I know that it's more than $25 to be a Girl Scout because you buy your sash and your vest and you do these things, but we also teach girls how to raise the money to buy those things so that we're not nickel and diming the families when we do Girl Scouting right. These girls are walking away with lifelong things that are going to help them in their everyday life. And I really believe that it's worth every single penny of $25. Um, the Girl Scouts in Northeast Ohio has choos chosen not to add the council fee to the annual membership dues. So there are councils across the country that charge an additional fee in addition to the $25. We don't do that. Okay. Um, but they're, they're out there. Um, remember, financial assistance is still available to girls who qualify. And also keep in mind, troops may choose to earn the funds for their annual membership dues by participating in the council-sponsored product sales, as we mentioned earlier. Okay, and then I got a couple last-minute announcements from my friends around here, which are actually on post-it notes because I did not have time to make slides. So let me find the right post-it. Okay, Lizbeth wanted me to remind you that October 14th, through this, I'm winging this because I can't find my note. Hold on. Okay, I think I know it though. I think I can do this. October 14th through the 16th is Troop Only Weekend at Camp. So beginning in July, troops will be able to book out October for troop camping. And service units are blocked from booking on that weekend at any of our camps. So what happens is service units have a head start on booking. And October, you know, the fall, beautiful month, um, troops are saying we never have a chance to camp because my service unit doesn't do a service unit camp out. We want to camp in the fall and we never, we can't get in because we're shut out for a while and by the time it opens up, it's booked. And so we said, okay, we're going to try something. How about if we reserve one weekend where we won't let service units book it, we'll just let the troops book it. And we'll see how it goes. So if you are a troop and you want to camp in October, in July, you, it'll open up October 14th through the 16th at all three camps. So can you just remind everybody about that? And then also, please note that Scout Ship for 2016, that's the year that we're in right now, um, is going to be closing um, at the end of May. So pretty soon here. Um, people will not be able to apply for scout ship. So remember, scout ship is for programs, insignia, books, okay? That's going to close down, and um, I believe, um, I, be I want to say maybe financial aid too, but that's for this year, okay? So it will open again in, in August for next year okay so at some point this we did the same thing last year we really didn't have any problems but just a reminder that we do close down one year's financial aid requests and we open up for next year so if you are wanting to 
get in on Skyship, you want some, you know, you want the books or insignia or whatever, you, can, you know, you can't afford it, then get the application in right now if you need it right now because you won't be able to ask for it after this month until August. Um, okay. Oh, Brenda, you want to volunteer as our lifeguard? But we want to party with you. How are you going to be the lifeguard if you have to be, you know, if you're, you're going to be partying with your people? I don't know. I'm sure you would be an awesome lifeguard. But, um, you know, I, I thought we were going to play in the water. Okay. Well, we'll get, let's talk about that later. Um, okay. And then just a reminder, we do have another call coming up on June 23rd. Again, that's position specific. Okay. All right. Anything you guys want to add? Any questions that you might have? Going once, going twice. All right. Sold. We're out of here. Okay. Have a wonderful evening. Thank you so much for your time and attention and for everything you do for the Girl Scouts of Northeast Ohio. We treasure you. And I can't wait to see you soon. Have a great night. Bye-bye.